ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه It was a night time when everybody had gone to sleep. A man gets up. He turns on the TV. All of his family are deep asleep. And he watches something that's not very that's not appropriate all of a sudden a door opens and his daughter comes out and she just barely learned how to talk she looked at her father her father tried to rush to the TV and the remote to turn off and she said she said shame on you father shame on you and then she went back into her room and so that man after turning off the tv those words resonated in his head shame on you father shame on you and tears started coming down his eyes and he stayed up until fajr crying then he went to the masjid and he prayed with the congregation and he was crying so profusely some of the brothers who had not seen him that fajr prayer they said are you okay brother he said i'm okay one of his close friends came to him he says are you okay and he is crying and he says for over 20 years for 20 years this was my first sujood for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his daughter his daughter came on and said shame on you so he went to work that morning and of course he was very tired because he didn't get much sleep at night his wife tried to call him but she couldn't reach him he came out he came home and she said honey our daughter just passed away his daughter passed away and those words again came the last words that she heard were 
Shame on you, Father. Shame on you. The whole day. Those were his last words. Shame on you. So he went and he buried her. And he put her in the grave. When he put her in, he smiled. And his friend looked at him and said, Why are you smiling? When he had been crying so much, and now he puts his daughter in the grave and he smiles. He says, I buried my daughter, but she left a nur that will remain in my heart, inshallah, until the day of judgment. And from that time on, he came strong and he kept on going to the masjid. And he changed. Allah took away something from him. But because of those words from his daughter, he became good again. For 20 years, he didn't even prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shame on you. All of us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a lot of time to change, to improve ourselves. It's enough, we've been disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a very long time. During the time of Bani Israel, there was a great drought, a major drought in the area. And so the people approached Prophet Musa alayhi salam and they said, Oh Musa, children are starving, the elders are suffering. The animals are dying, the vegetation is all shriveled up. Supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He will send down rain to us. <coughs> and so Prophet Musa alayhi salam gathered Bani Israel in an open area in a desert. And he supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Ya Allah, the children are starving and the elders are suffering, the animals are dying and the vegetation is all shriveled up, dried up, send rain down upon us. Ya Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered him with the statement, O oh Musa, there's a servant amongst you, there's a servant amongst you, who has been disobedient to me for 40 years. Tell him to leave the congregation and I shall send down the rain. And so Prophet Musa alayhi salam looked towards the congregation. He said, oh so, so and so, whoever this person is, have mercy upon the congregation and the people and leave so that Allah may send down rain to us. So that person, he knew who he was. He looked right to the right, he looked towards the left, nobody was leaving and he knew it was him. Nobody else except him. So he went, he covered himself with his shirt and he started to cry. Because people were suffering and the rain isn't coming down. If he doesn't leave, but if he leaves, everyone will know that this person has been disobedient to Allah for 40 years. So what is he going to do? He was so remorseful, so sad. And he didn't know what to do. He just asked Allah, Ya Allah, forgive me. In tears of sincerity and repentance, mercy in his heart for the people and repentance, that remorsefulness in his heart, caused the tears to come down. And as soon as the tears hit the ground, the rain also came down with it. So Prophet Musa alayhi salam looked and he said, Ya Allah, nobody left the congregation. Why did you send down the rain? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded, I sent down the rain because of that same person, because of his sincere repentance and his remorsefulness. 
I sent down the rain because of that same person. And so Prophet Musa alayhi salam said, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, show us that repenting servant of yours so that we may be thankful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Oh Musa, for 40 years he disobeyed me and I covered up his sins. And now that he has repented, do you think I'm going to show you who he is? All of us, when you look at the problems and around us, we always start blaming other people, but it's no one else except for us, every one of us right now. We have to realize, Allah has covered up our sins. And it's time to change. And it's time to change, and even there are some people who even say, you know, Prophet Adam alayhi salam, we would still be in Jannah right now. We would still be in Jannah right now. If Prophet Adam didn't eat from the tree. La ilaha illallah. Don't blame Prophet Adam alayhi salam. We, every single day, we are put in that position. Allah, pre Allah says this is haram and we fail over and over again. But let us realize that we have to repent and there's a time when you make that conviction that you change. You don't just say it with your mouth. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Bahinu hand is my soul. Waladhi nafsi biyadi. Inni la astaghfirullah wa atubi ilayhi fil yawm. Mi'ata marra. Bahinu hand is my soul. I repent. I ask forgiveness and I repent. Istighfar is what you say with your mouth. Repentance is the conviction and showing it in action. That's what we need to do. Not just say it, but to put it into action. In a single day, the Prophet wasallam repents a hundred times and he asks forgiveness a hundred times. How many times have we asked today? And Allah has already forgiven his past and future sins. And thus, all of us, we have to realize that repentance entails that we make the conviction to be the best that we can be. During the time of Bani Israel, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us of the people before, of a people before, a person who killed 99 people. 99 people. But he had that burning desire to return to Allah and to change. So he sought after the most knowledgeable person that he could find and he asked the people and he was shown a man who was an Abid. So he went to him and he said, I killed 99 people. Is there repentance for me? So he looked at him and he said, 99 people? No, 99? He had already killed 99 people. One more isn't going to take that much energy for him. He's already used to it. So he killed them also, completed 100. He killed them also when he said, no. What else does he have? If there's no more hopes of repentance, might as well, what's the difference between 99 and 100? And so, but you know what? There was still this burning desire in him to be return. There were still hopes. He still had hopes. So he was still seeking the most knowledgeable person. Show me the most knowledgeable person in the face of this earth. <coughs> so that I may ask him. He wanted the final word. Is, there, is it possible or not? He doesn't want to go to any little guy who might not know or think this and that. So he was shown a scholar and he came to, he went to him and he said, is there anything that can come between you and repentance? Of course, Allah will always accept. But, but, you have to leave the land of the bad people and go to the land of the good people. 
In other words, it's not all by words, you have to put it by action. And it's not easy leaving your own town, your own family, the people you're familiar with. But he had that burning desire to change and so he wanted to change. So he went halfway. He passed away. Both the angel of mercy and the angel of punishment came down and they asked him, or they, they were they were fighting over who should take his soul. The angel of mercy said he was already on his way towards repentance, to change. He made that conviction already. The angel of punishment said he hasn't done any good yet. He hasn't done any good yet. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel who came in the form of a man to settle this dispute. And so he said, why don't you Measure the distance between the land of the good people and the land of the bad people. Which wherever the two he's closest to, then you take him accordingly. And so they measured, and because Allah, Allah is ever, is ever waiting, wanting us to return. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused a miracle to happen. He made the distance between that man and the land of the good people. Short, he to order the earth to shorten the distance and they measured and it was shorter. And so the angel of mercy took him. The point in this is, never lose hope. There's always time to change. No matter what you were before, I'm sure most of us here, I'm pretty, I mean, almost definitely sure we, we didn't go around killing 99 people yet, but Allah is still merciful. We have less than that, probably most of us. But you have to have that desire and never lose hope. Why? Why? Because he who loses hope is a kafir, is a disbeliever, is a non-Muslim. If you lose hope in Allah because of your condition or because you feel that your sins are so great, it's like you're saying, Ya Allah, my sins are so great, your mercy can't even encompass it. A'udhu Billah. How can you say that? Or when you're in such a hard, difficult situation, it's like you're saying, Ya Allah, you don't know the hardship I'm going through. If you lose hope, how can you lose hope? How can you be pessimistic when you have Allah with you? So we should learn. We should realize that the time is now. Before you get out of here, this is the time to repent. This is the time to change. This is the time to work for Jannah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بعد أن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وسارعوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة وسارعوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة عرضها السماوات والأرض عدت للمتقين and compete and hurry towards the forgiveness of Allah Allah wants us, wants to forgive, wants to forgive us. All we have to do is start the process. Allah loves it when we repent. So hurry, don't delay. Every day you wake up in the morning is another opportunity at life. Another opportunity for you to repent and to change. But you know what? Every day might be the final opportunity. It might be your last chance. For death can come at any time. Wasari'u in hurry. Wasari'u ila maghfiratim min rabbikum wa jannah in a paradise of which its width is the width of the heavens and the earth. U'iddat lil muttaqeen. Prepared for the muttaqoon. So who are the muttaqun? Who are those who repent to Allah? Who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
الذين ينفقون في الصراء والضراء those who spend in times of ease and in times of hardship those who spend in times of ease and in times of hardship the first description Allah mentions of the muttaqin and those who ask forgiveness and those who want Jannah and those who hurry for Jannah. Why? Because if you are not able to spend from wealth that Allah can return and gives you back all the time, then how are you going to control your desires? How are you going to repent and stay strong? If you're not willing to sacrifice even that money for Allah's sake. In hard times of hardship and in ease, they're always generous and always kind. And so this is the time and these are opportunities. When we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the opportunity to do good, you have to hurry. Why? Because every opportunity to do good that you pass up might be an opportunity to enter Jannah that you're passing up. And it might be your final opportunity. So always take advantage of the opportunities that Allah gives to us. And the opportunity to return to Him is given to us every single day as long as we're still breathing. أَقُولُ قَالِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُهَا لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Umar al-Khattam radiallahu anhu had had enough. He had enough of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so he decided to go out with his sword and to finish this problem that the Quraysh were having once and for all. To kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He, was he had the conviction and he was going to commit the greatest crime that has ever been committed. To kill the best of mankind, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That was his conviction. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him and changed him. Because he saw what was in his heart. And so he ended up accepting La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became the most beloved person to him. He was going to commit the greatest crime in history. But he ended up accepting Islam and changing the course of history. What a turnaround, huh? All of us right now, if you want to be strong, you want to be firm, especially during these times right now, we have to make that turnaround. We can't just change just to be better. We have to change by making a change within ourselves and making a change in our community, in our families. We have to make, we have to do that. That's the type of conviction that we need. That's the type of repentance that we need. We have to put it in action. We have to help our families and help the community. We can't be just a regular, regular Joe Shmo or Muhammad Khan, no. We have to give back 
and we have to contribute and we have to help with whatever, with whatever we can. We have to make that change. We change ourselves and then we also should make that change. All of us are coming back or coming from different situations and backgrounds. But Allah knows that every single one of us can make a difference. All of us. I'm going to tell you a story of a great, star, a great scholar by the name of Malik ibn Dinar. This is a very, very pious scholar known for his piety and righteousness. He was an alcoholic in his youth. And he had a daughter who was very, very young, just crawling, didn't even know how to walk yet. He loved her very, very much. And every time he would drink, she would come and tip the glass over. She would crawl over and tip the glass over. And so one day, he came home, and again his wife, his wife, said, her daughter just passed away. And you know what alcoholics do when they're very sad? They go and drink more. So he was very sad. But he was very saddened by what had happened and he went and he started drinking and he said he didn't even come home until night time and that night he went to sleep without praying Isha. Even alcoholics prayed during those days. And then he had a dream. It was the day of judgment and people were coming out of their graves and he was amongst them. But he was being chased by a humongous snake, a black, big black snake that was chasing him and nobody else. And so he ran and ran until he had no one else or nowhere else to go. And he saw an old, old, frail man dressed in all white, very handsome, but he was old and frail. And he ran towards him. He said, oh, old man, can you help me? The snake is chasing me. And so the old man said, how can I help you? Look how weak and frail I am. I'm nothing against that humongous snake. So he kept on running and running until he almost fell off a cliff. And then he stopped. And there was a voice coming from, da from down there. And he could hear voices of people being punished. And the voice came out and said, Oh Malik, you're not amongst these people. Go back. So he ran back to that man again and he said, Oh old man, help me. And the old man said, How can I help you? But if there's anyone or anything that can help you, it's behind that mountain over there. And so he ran to the mountain. And he saw children playing at the foot of the mountain. And then they were saying, Does anybody know this man? Does anybody know this man? And then his daughter who had just passed away crawled out from amongst them and looked at, his, looked at her father. Her father picked her up and she said, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Is it time for the believers to have their hearts trample and melt in the remembrance of Allah? In other words, isn't it time to return to Allah? She said, Oh Father, isn't it time? Then he looked down at her and she said, Oh daughter, you know how to talk? You even know how to read the Quran. And she said, Father, here we read the Quran better than you. And so he said, Well, what's all of this? The snake is still chasing me. 
And so she just said like this with her hands, and the snake fled. And so she said, what's all of this? He said, what's all this? So his daughter said, Father, that snake, those were your sins. You have too much of them. And your sins, they were chasing you to the hellfire. But you're not amongst them, Father. You're not amongst them, Father. As for the old man, those were your good deeds. They were too little for you, too frail, too weak to help you. So he woke up. He took a shower and he prayed. He started to cry. And he, st he stayed with the scholars, studied from them, and became a great scholar known for his piety and righteousness. And this was Malik ibn Dinar. If you don't know who he is, read about him. About all the times, all the things that he did that people called him that he was so known for righteousness and piety. He changed for the best. He changed and he made a change. And that's what we all need to do. We all need to hurry. We all need to do it quickly. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم آتي نفوسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر اعداءك اعداء الدين ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار واقم الصلاه <تصفيق>